The government says problem drug users cost this country over £15 billion a year. Should we, could we do more to break their addiction or is the compulsion just too strong? This is a thing where I know it's a disease. It's just, whenever I see it, it doesn't matter that like I was sat there in that flat in Hackney and now I'm in the Savoy Hotel. I'm, I'm jealous of me then. <laughs> The recovering drug addict and comedian Russell Brand is here to tell us why this country's getting it wrong on drugs. With him, the man who helped him get clean, a writer who thinks the war on drugs is a cruel hoax, and a Tory MP who advises the government on drug policy. And they're calling them the Women's Games, the Olympics when female athletes finally came into their own. We'll ask three gold medal winning rowers whether London 2012 will turn more British women onto sport. Good evening. The comedian Russell Brand is famous for a lot of things that don't have much to do with his jokes. One of those things is he used to do a lot of hard drugs. The government estimates there are 330,000 problem drug users in this country, nearly half of whom, 149,000, have been prescribed methadone to deal with their addiction. In a documentary to be broadcast on BBC Three next week, Russell Brand says that's plain wrong. We'll speak to him in a minute. First, a taste of his typically understated documentary. This is a film about drugs about taking drugs and getting off drugs. Nowadays, I don't drink or take drugs. I'm a little bit cool, a little bit of a twit, and I sort of think I'm Jesus. <laughs> Ten years ago, though, I couldn't get enough of them. It's all right, yeah. Cannabis, booze, acid, speed, coke, crack, smack, that's heroin. I took drugs every single day. I know that you took that abstinence. That's absolutely fine, but I think actually keeping patient, some patients, the vast majority of mine who are on methadone, do very, very well. Methadone's a drug. If you're on methadone, you're on drugs. You know, so like, you know, so for me, it's like uh, just rearranging the furniture on the Titanic. I would love everybody to live drug-free lives on nothing. Mm. But I've been a GP long enough to know that that's not possible. You're not a drug addict, are you? It doesn't make no difference to me. The money, the fame, the power, the sex, the women, none of it. I'd rather be a drug addict. If I didn't have my program, I'd be a drug addict today, like that, in a second. I'd walk out, I know how to score around here. Like, I'd do it gladly. And the reason I don't do it is because of the things I'm talking to you about. And I know that with methadone, I'd be using it on top. Well, Russell Brand is here. Russell Brand, welcome. Thanks, um, Stephanie. I've watched, I've watched most of the documentary, more than that, and I guess the first question is, why did you make it? Why did you think it was important to make? Was it Amy Winehouse's death? Because you do talk about that. In Perhaps the that was a catalyst in my decision to make the documentary, but primarily, Stephanie, it was because I wanted more people to be aware of the possibility of abstinence-based recovery, which I believe to be the true solution to the problem and disease of alcoholism and addiction. Which is going cold turkey, basically, just being... Not Full going cold turkey, it. no, because it's having a programme and a method to deal with a life free from drugs. Because we saw at the beginning of the programme, I mean, I think the thing that I found most shocking and amazing about the footage in the film is you're watching yourself mm. taking drugs in your late 20s. It, you look pretty miserable in those pictures, and yet you're sitting in the Savoy Hotel saying, I envy that former self, I kind of wish I was an addict now. A lot of people are going to watch that and just not understand at all. I think that what must be frustrating for the families of people with drug and alcohol problems is that the allure and potency of the disease is such that it makes people make a lot of irrational and difficult decisions. The things that I did when I was using and drinking were uh, fathomless and boundless and nonsensical. And I think that anyone who knows someone that's suffering from this disease will think, well, why would they do that? Why would they say that? How can they do so that? So why did you do it? Why did because you do that? I felt like I had no choice at the time because I think there's a deep sadness and malady within people that they're trying to address with alcohol and drugs. And what is it exactly that you think people should be doing? What's the government doing wrong? I think what the government is doing wrong is directing too much funds towards methadone and harm reduction and not giving people the correct information about alcoholism and addiction. I think by focusing on criminalising people that use drugs, I think that it, it, you're criminalising an entire class, an entire culture that actually 
uh, if it was treated as a health issue, would perhaps be able to progress away from it. So you want to you want to decriminalise? I think that's kind of a sensational way of saying what I'm saying, but I, I don't think that criminalisation works. So I, I don't know because I don't really feel like I'm qualified to talk about uh, legislative issues. But I know that it doesn't work. And as a recovering drug addict, I know that when I was using the legal status of the drugs that I used made no difference. But do you think? I mean, a lot of people would look at your film and look at other things about drug addicts and just say, look, these are, this is a self-inflicted problem. Mm. Why should we spend more money trying to help these people? You admit yourself it's very expensive, the kind of treatment that you have is very expensive. I don't know that it's that expensive comparatively compared to putting people in prison, compared to the social costs, compared to the cost it has on families and our society in general. This problem exists, it's going to continue to exist, and I think if we address it successfully, then we'll see improvement. So I think that's an economic investment that you, as an economics editor, will <laughs> rightly understand, <laughs> Stephanie. Well, but I also understand we don't have very much money at the moment. Why yes, should we give so, more uh, money to people? Well, because we've got to spend it, otherwise we'll be spending it on prisons and prisoners and on the, the, dealing with the, the... It's unavoidable. The expenditure is unavoidable. It's, really, it's the reallocation of funds is what I'm talking about. But you don't think necessarily it should be legal? Not really, because I don't sort of necessarily want to encourage it. I don't think that we should be sending the message to young people that drugs are all right and drugs are cool. I myself don't drink or, and don't take drugs. I think that people, a certain type of person, should never drink or take drugs. People that have alcohol, uh, uh, alcoholism or addictive tendencies should really, really avoid it. What I'm saying is that this issue, like none other, shows a disjunct between the government and the people they govern. They don't understand the disease, they don't understand the problem, and they're dealing with it badly. But your key point is it is a disease. You yeah. think it is a disease a disorder rather than something that people have just got into they could have stopped it's a self-inflicted problem yeah that's that's my belief that's my empirical understanding from 10 years of using drugs and 10 years free from drugs okay well we're joined by a few people to talk about this and uh, but before we uh, before we widen the debate um, we've got Russell Brand we've got uh, Chip Summers of the drug rehabilitation charity focus 12 who helped get him clean the columnist Peter Hitchens, who's written a book, The War We Never Fought, The British Establishment Surrender to Drugs, and the Conservative MP David Burroughs, who helped write Tory policy and drugs and rehabilitation. We're going to get to all of that in a minute, but first we've got one more clip from uh, Russell's documentary. The Mount Prison in Hemel Hempstead, North London, is one place where prisoners get more than methadone. They run an abstinence programme inside. I didn't become an addict at 17 when I, when I suffered a bereavement. I was an addict from when I was two years old. My manipulation started when I was two years old. My control started when I was three. You know, it's the hardest. It's the hardest thing I've honest. ever done. I have to be and very that's not honest. That's very easy because it's revealing and uh, painful. Yeah, you know, something's a bit embarrassing. I've, I've sat in this room at times and felt, felt like I was sitting here naked. You know, you weren't though, but, were you? Just to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, goes you know. on? It is a cult. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got uh, Chip Summers, Peter Hitchens, David Burrows, Peter Hitchens. Russell Brand says this is a disorder. We should treat drug addiction like a disease. Do you agree? No, it's a crime. It's, it involves the possession of a Class A drug, which is a criminal offence, which people do voluntarily and they do it for pleasure. And if we continue to treat it as if it is a disease, which they should be sympathised with, there will be more and more and more of it, as there has been over the past many years. We do not anymore enforce our own laws on this subject. The, the very word addiction assumes that the person involved has no free will. You have no sympathy at all for the people who get trapped on drugs for years? On well, I, haven't, I have sympathy with, with, with anybody who, who gets themselves into trouble, but sympathy isn't the point. What I don't have is any sympathy with somebody who deliberately breaks a known law. They are criminals. They should be punished. And honestly, if they were punished for this, they would, by and large, not get into the trouble they get into, and there would be many, many fewer of them. But we don't do that. Russell you can look at, the, look, at the, look at the figures for, for arrests of people, even for possession of Class A drugs, which we supposedly view most seriously. Of the ones who are convicted, fewer than one in ten are actually sentenced to imprisonment. This is a Class A drug, the most serious. Russell Brown, they are, they are criminals. What, what's wrong with what I said? understand what Pete is saying, and I understand his frustration. As a person that has to deal with drug addicts in my life, they're a frustrating type of person to deal with. But I think, Peter, that if you can find in yourself to look at human, human beings with compassion and love, 
rather than with aggression, you'll find that there's more of an opportunity for progress. I know it's annoying. Well, I don't wish to be should... lectured on aggression by you. You've been extremely aggressive to me in the past when, we, when, when we've met. That's just because of the bigotry, reason. Peter. The, I don't mean uh, it. I'm only uh, having a bit uh, of fun well, because I, of the Daily Mail uh, stuff when, and that. When you actually learn to use reason, you can accuse people of bigotry. Until then, I should keep very quiet about it. Learn well, to use, very, learn to use some reason in this matter. On news night Why now? is a comedian being given a programme on the BBC to push a policy about drugs. Because why, he has why, first, no, no, he has no, first wait, hand wait experience why, of why is, that, why is our debate on drugs so debased that this, this is the kind of thing we are reduced to? Peter, why are you why, so no, angry? Why, why, no, why, why, you, I, I, I'm angry because, because many, many young people in this country are being betrayed what do you think by, we a should feeble, do? by a feeble government and a feeblest... What do you think feeblest, we should do, Peter? I think we should enforce our law against illegal drugs. You want people in prison? I don't want people stuff. in prison, no. I want, I want people deterred from taking drugs, how? taking drugs which will ruin their lives by punishment. Right? I want that. Well, I don't think people should well, take drugs. You ask the question, you better listen to the answer. I want, I, I want, <laughs> yeah, no, I want them Peter, deterred by effective, not just banal, by effective prescriptive policing. Bigotry. Listen to what I'm saying, you'll learn something. I've heard it before, Peter. Well, you plainly weren't listening rambling. that time either. I, I don't want even think you're ignorant. I just think you're innocent. By effective policing. You're like a peculiar child. You see, ad hominem. And ad hominem and interruption. Absolutely nothing remotely resembling reason, thought, or fact. And yet you are you making a, you are making a program on drugs for the BBC, Mate, you know and I am not. You and that is that is what is exactly what is wrong. Let's bring in one of the people. Let's people. bring in one of the people yeah, who's, on, in bring, the bring film, in. who's in the film. Who's in the film? Who's qualified to be in the film? Willows. Two Summers is qualified to be in the film. He's someone who got Russell Brand and many other people clean on drugs. What do you think is the answer? What do I think it was? What do you think is the answer? What do you think? Is it compassion? Is it locking up? Well, there are very simplistic terms, compassion, locking up. I think, Making it of legal? course, well, of course, everybody who, who takes that class A drugs is committing a crime. But people do it, and people do it because it is pleasurable to begin with. And then they become addicted. And I think at that point, you need to intervene in a kind and compassionate way. Nobody sets out to become highly addicted to drugs. It is it a disease. It's, we should treat it as a disease, you as should. a disorder? I don't know whether it's a disease or an illness. All I know is that everybody who walks through the door of my treatment centre did not intend to end up that way. They started off with perhaps good intentions, but they did not intend to end up the way. It crept up on them and they became very ill and very sick and those people need help and we try and give it to them. They'd have been better off if they'd been deterred from doing it in the first place, but which is what we do not do. And we don't do it with Insta alcohol either. Insta instead, the government mugs the taxpayer to the tune of £300 million a year to give drugs to people who are already on well, drugs. That's what David I, Burrows, that's, I was, that's what uh, that was something that I thought was yeah. shocking to find out, that nearly 150,000 people are yeah. prescribed methadone in this country. Yeah. Now, should we be actually giving drugs to people and just sort of trying to keep them off the street rather than le helping them kick their addiction, which is basically what Russell Brand if, if we want to be caring, uh, it's not caring just to simply give them methadone to park themselves up on methadone. And this government has recognised that this big tanker that's been throwing a whole lot of money into 300,000 on that tanker hasn't had a destination. It's been going around just giving them methadone, keeping them in the treatment and not actually giving them an exit. There's, and there's not much, you, you've, them, been, you've been in power for two years, there's not much sign that it's changing. Well, 18% more people have, have come out drug free in the last year and now we're going to be paying people in areas to provide rehab and opportunities to get off drugs and also to be get back into society again, into employment, into proper housing, and with that to pay them by the results, not just to pay them to get into treatment, but to get out of it, but the into truth society is, But the again. truth is the government uses method, is going to end up using methadone because it's cheap, surely? That is why well, it, it. it's not actually cheap in the long run to be years and years in methadone. We're now getting jerry addicts who've been in, in on methadone for so many years. It makes sense for the addict and for those around them to get them off as soon as possible. The truth is the law-abiding public are punished by the government through, through very heavy taxation for this ridiculous program. Uh, for, because the government is not prepared to punish people for breaking the law on drugs, which, if they enforced, would prevent an awful lot of people but following the road which ship is described. And costs a, cost a lot more money as well, though, surely. Well, well, it, your it, approach it, would it, actually, a real more, war on drugs it, it than your terms would cost, cost a lot of money. It, it wouldn't cost it endlessly. What we have done is committed ourselves to an endless program, as I say, of mugging the public to, to give methadone to people who are already on drugs, <sighs> which, 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 has, which, has, which has, over the past 40 years, produced a gigantic increase in the number of people taking heroin. Machine machine from Victorian Britain. But Russell, Russell's one He's of the lucky... He's a Tory MP, he's yeah. a fantastic no. fellow. Well, we know that the, 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 the Tory Russell. party 
Sophie, as we know, is no, a Sophie no, Liberal Party, no, no, so that's no surprise. No, there's, no, there's, nothing, there's, nothing, there's, nothing, there's nothing easy in Sophie by getting off drugs. Now, Ross is one of the lucky ones. Ro Rocky, Russell is one of the lucky ones who can come here and tell his story, and we want other people to hear that story. But the reality is that the access to rehab that Chip offers and others isn't enough. It's not around the country. No, we want to ensure that there's more people who are able to access that treatment and tell that story. Whatever you think well, of us, it's a good story to tell. And some of the most, some of the most, some of the most inspirational people. You're not in an Olympic conversation. Well, you need to put your hand in. In terms of the Olympics, do, do, some of the most uh, inspirational who, people that you can hear who, about who, are those who have got through the the, the throes of addiction and have managed to recover. Who's and we telling need to hear the more story? Who's telling the story of the parent of the young person who's in danger of becoming a, of becoming a drug user who gets no help? or deterrence from the government. Who's telling, who's, who, who's telling the story of the taxpayer who has to finance this failed, endless project? Nobody is telling that story, but he goes on television to tell okay, the story really, from the I sympathetic never, point I of view. Let's I'd be, be sorry for drug I never thought I'd be saying this on this programme, but I think Russell Brown should get a word in. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Peter, I think we want the same thing. I don't think any okay. of us are saying that children should be taking drugs or anyone should be taking drugs. I think what we want to offer is a sensible solution to a difficult problem. And criminalisation and imprisonment isn't working. And it's wonderful to hear this gentleman from the Tory party talk in such compassionate terms. I understand your frustration, mate, but I really think that the techniques and methods that you're talking about are antiquated and belong in another era. That kind of foghorn madness from bygone times is not going to help anybody. They, there you go again. No reason, just abuse. Uh, the, 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 I'd love to see the embrace between you and the Conservative Party. The more of it, the no. better. The more people will realise how useless the Conservative Party is to people in this country who care about these things. But, but the, the, the fact is, your no. policy has been uh, tried. Has been, wait a minute, I'm no. finishing my sentence. Oh. Your policy has been tried. It's been tried for 40 years, person. and what we see, and what we see now, mm. is the consequence <laughs> of it. What we see is a large number of, 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 of drug takers, far greater than 40 years ago. The policy has been applied of decriminalizing drugs in all but name. This country would decriminalize drugs if it were not for the fact that it was signed international treaties preventing it from doing so. The decriminalization is, is, is unofficial, but it is there. But Russell, and we have the result of what you are calling for, and it is terrible. It's time we had a change. But would, you, would you be better off if you'd been sent to prison at, I at the right time? I don't think it would have been of much assistance, uh, generally speaking, Stephanie. Well, you talk no, about abstinence. That is one way of approaching abstinence. I think that perhaps pr abstinence programs in prisons is certainly one of the things that we should be looking at. I think the penal system is one of the areas where there's vast room for improvement. I think it's a, a mentality shift, and perhaps that's why Peter thinks it sounds vague, because what we're talking about is quite broad. It's an attitudinal shift. Regarding it as a health problem as opposed to a criminal problem is the first step. I certainly don't think prison would have helped, although many people it's would argue. Do you, do you think it would have helped Russell Brown to go to prison? It would have, it would have, it would have helped him if he'd, if he'd been afraid of going to prison enough not to take the drugs in the first place. That's, that that's what a deterrent law me. does. It's not designed to throw everybody who takes drugs into prison. It's designed to deter people from taking them in the first place. But in place. order to deter also, them, is, you have to send them to prison. Would no, you, you be you better off send, You have to send to some prison. people to prison to prove that you mean it. Once you've done that, then they, then they believe you. But okay, if you stop you. sending people to prison, as we've done, they know you don't mean it, and but they know that the, the criminal money. justice system is cardboard. Yeah. But that's made it's really, so we, shouldn't, we shouldn't be tolerating drugs use, but at the same time, once we've got them in the system, in prison, we should be making sure they get rehab as well. And that's what we're trying to do, to make sure we don't just well, throw them yeah, well, the why are the prisons that you, make sure why they get into the Why are the prisons that you run full of drugs then? Isn't because they are, you that, make no serious effort to keep drugs Isn't there a problem that you all have, or at least that I think that both, actually Peter Hitchens and Russell Brown both have, which is that people oh, don't care him. about drug addicts. People don't want to spend a lot of money on them. They want the cheapest possible I policy, and true, they want them away somewhere. Yeah, they don't vote. They're quiet. a little bit of a nuisance. I understand. Isn't that the problem with your policy as well? That people don't care enough about drug addicts even to put them in prison. No, I don't think it's a problem at all. I think people do care a great deal, especially when this drug problem enters their own family sphere and, mm -hmm. and the disaster of drugs attacks your own family and circle. People to whom this happens are so devastated all that they, they, wonder, think, they wonder where the government is. Just, we haven't got much time, but just on my point, do you mm. think that people don't care enough about drug addicts? That's basically yes, the I think that's basically the problem. Although I have learned to love you, Peter, and in a minute I'm going to give you such a kiss on the lips, I'm going to challenge a few other of your prejudices. Oh, my dear child. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the homophobia. It's just under the surface there. Peter, I think how, you're a lovely how, man. How does one deal? I think you're how, a Harry one, Enfield how, character. How does one deal with a person who cannot debate seriously? And why is he? Why is this person brought before select committees and, and allowed to make programmes on the BBC? He simply isn't capable of doing it. There's more debate. He just, he just debate doesn't know how to debate. For instance, he, uses, he uses this expression criminalisation. The person who criminalises is the person who commits the criminal offence. People are not criminalised. Otherwise, otherwise, all you're saying is that all crime is caused by law. 
No, they, which no, is a it's, ludicrous it's proposition. It's people so people commit crimes and they are, and they are punished. I think the last no, word, an awful lot of words have gone to Peter Hitchens. Yeah. The yep, last words of Russell Brand. <laughs> that was the idea. Ah, oh, you admit it now. I think right. he's quite a lovely fella deep down, and he's just a little bit confused. We're not saying, of course, that the law should entitle people to act in a madcap, ad hoc fashion. We're just saying that if a social problem like drug addiction and alcoholism exists, there should be the proper, responsible, conscientious treatment. There are gentlemen like Chip Summers who understand how abstinence-based recovery works. My job is simply to draw attention to abstinence-based recovery. Yeah. That's all I want to do. And a component yeah. of that is a tolerance and understanding to and people unwell. If this, this affects people's lives all over our country. Okay. And we have to We're approach have it to with leave benevolence. It Russell Brown's documentary is going to be You're on doing uh, great. BBC. I prefer you to that Pac-Man fella. <laughs> oh, that'll get you anyway. Right, from Russell Brand to sweaty women. Let's Res go! <laughs> Research shows that nearly half of teenage girls think sport is unfeminine, too messy apparently, too much sweat. Some of the commentators watching the women's boxing and judo this week seem to agree. One said he was worried about their soft bones getting bruised. Was that you, Peter? But mostly we've been applauding our sporting women the past two weeks, not to mention their ten gold medals for Team GB. So here on Newsnight, we're wondering whether any of that warm glow will last.